In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use normal pass to relight your scene in After Effects, Nuke, and Fusion. I'm Denasa with Action VFX, and I will be your instructor for today, so let's get started. So, before we begin, let me explain what normal pass is. Normal pass is a render pass that helps you figure out the orientation of surfaces in your 3D render. For example, here I have our new assorted tree collection, and in the EXR file of this tree, we have the normal pass. And when you access it, we have this colorful look of our tree. But if you look at the individual RGB channel, you can see how each channel showcases our three surfaces essentially being lit up from three direction. Red representing the X direction, which is side to side. Green is Y, top to bottom, and Z is front to back or the depth. So using this data, we can plug in some effects if you're using After Effects or Nodes, if you're using Nuke Infusion, to relight your element. So first, you want to have your original 3 EXR and the normal pass layer. The key to relighting is to grab at least one of the color channels from this normal pass and use it as a mat to color correct or just layer on top of the original beauty pass. But of course, that would require some steps and also not flexible. So an easier way to deal with normal pass in After Effects is to download this free plugin called Normality. Once that is downloaded, you can bring that effects plugin to the original footage layer, not the one with the normal pass layer. And then we want to disable the normal pass because we just want to use it as a reference for the effects. And then on the beauty layer, let's select the normal pass from the normal layer. And don't forget to select effects and mask. That's important because we get the normal pass through the extractor effects. And then select the alpha matte to our current beauty layer. And then let's create a point light. And look at here. Our point light is casting some lights on the tree. And you can move it around and even change the intensity or the color. You can also push the light to the front and back. And if you want to have more accuracy with this, you can extract the depth pass layer from the tree and then plug it to normality. And then of course you can play around with the shading, specularity, reflection, so many things. Once you have the lighting the way you want, you want to go to the blend option here. And basically you want to decide the way this black and white lighting mat blend to the beauty layer. Let's say you want to remove all the black but keep the white. So let's just use screen and turn this up to one. Or you can keep this black and white color and use it as a luma mat for an adjustment layer. What I found to be the best workflow is instead to use multiply. So now we have only the lit up part of the tree present. And then we can bump up the brightness with some color correction. And then we want to have another layer of just the tree without all the effects. And let's remove the black background here by turning this to screen. And we have our tree. Now let's do this process in Nuke. By the way, we have a lot of other content on our channel like VFX breakdowns, stock footage announcements, and other tutorials that we release weekly. So make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. And now, let's go back to the video. So here we have our EXR multi-layer plate. To do relighting in Nuke, you're going to need both the 2D and the 3D views. And so instead of going back and forth in the viewer with the 2D and 3D, I want to create two viewer nodes and have their monitors being placed side to side. One is the 2D view, the other is 3D view. In Nuke, we're going to use two passes for the lighting, which is the normal pass and the position pass. So combining the data of where the points are and where they are facing allow us to do a more detailed relighting in post. So let's bring in a relight node and plug our plate to the color. And then we want to create a light node and plug it in. And then you want to create camera and plug that in. And then we have the material input. The material is essentially what the light will be casted on. So the amount of reflection and diffusion from the light will be dictated by the material input. For this, I'm gonna use foam material. So now we have everything inputted. Let's go to the relight node and assign the normal and position pass. And if we have our two viewers looking at the 3D and 2D, you can see how I'm changing the lighting live. Now, to help with positioning your light in 3D space, you want to bring out a node called Position to Points. And all you have to do is plug it into the plate. And then we want to assign our position and normal. And let's reduce the point size. Here we have a nice reference of where our tree is in relation to the light. 
Next, we want to merge this on top of our plate and then turn the operation to multiply. There we go. If things get too dark, you can bring the ambient on the relight or just play around with the font settings. Perfect. Now, let's do this in Fusion. So here I am in DaVinci Resolve Fusion and to do relighting here is even simpler. First, you want to go to the media in of the tree and then on the channels, you want to set the normal pass. And then you want to search for the shader node and input our tree. So what we are seeing here is the specularity or reflection highlights being super strong. So you can reduce that. And then you can play around with the ambient and the fuse. And of course, to play around with the lighting direction, you can use this equator angle and polar height. Think of the lighting here like the sun. So equator angle is like the direction of the sun, like south, north, west, east, whereas the polar height is the height of the sun, whether it's midday or is it on sunset. So all you have to do is to just play around with these two combination to adjust your lighting. So now you can use this in your composition, just like in After Effects or in Nuke, you can just use this to multiply it with the original footage. And once again, if you're looking for VFX stock footage like we used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. We provide a vast library of high quality VFX assets that you can purchase right now for your projects. Learn more about this and our subscriptions below. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit like, subscribe, and let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. See you next time. Bye-bye.